Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. I recently had a lot of fun, making games for the Windows console in C++. To facilitate the development process, I wrote a simple game framework. And here are some console games, that I made so far by using this framework. You are surely pretty impressed with these masterpieces. Don't you? So, in this video, I'm going to show how to use the framework in practice, through a number of simple demos. Keep watching! Let's get started with my arsenal of development tools. The Notepad++ text editor is used for writing the code. The MinGW is used to build projects with a GCC compiler. The command line is used to execute scripts, which runs the compiler with additional options. Now, let's briefly describe the framework, imaginatively named Consoler. It consists of two files. The first one is the interface with the declarations of all classes and methods. The second one is the implementation of all that. So, let's take a look at some features of the framework. It creates a new console window, runs the main loop, and handles all user inputs from a keyboard or mouse. To render the scene, it uses color attributes of the console buffer. So instead of being used to display characters, each character cell actually represents one pixel. Thanks to this fact, we can quickly clean the screen. Furthermore, we can draw pixels, lines, rectangles, circles, and even sprites. We can also print text using the bitmap fonts. The framework also contains some utility functions, an audio manager to play sounds, and a sprite manager to manipulate with sprites. The preprocessor statements, at the beginning of the interface, provide access to the framework as a dynamic or static library. Here is the script, which runs the compiler to generate a dynamic link library. <laughs> okay, dynamic library is successfully created. And here is the script for generating a static library. And static library is successfully created. So we are now ready, to use the framework for our first demo. At first we need to include the interface of the consoler framework. Then we declare the game class, which inherits the consoler class. Now we can override the following two methods. The setup method, which is used for loading sprites, and setting up the game objects. The update method, which represents the main game loop. So inside this method, let's call a function to clean the screen in each frame. Finally, we have a main function, which is the entry point of the program. Here we initialize a new game, by defining the default console configuration. The configuration parameters are the console title, the screen size represented by number of characters per row and column, the screen zoom in the X and Y directions, and the desired number of frames per second. Once the console is created, we can run the main game loop. Let's compile the game, using the dynamic consoler library. If everything is okay, we should get a black screen. Nice. To exit the game, press the escape key. Instead of clearing the screen with the default black color, let's clean it with the green color. Of course, we can use any other color from the rich console color palette. We have these 16 colors available. So let's clean the screen with random colors, in the range from 0 to 15. Here we also need to initialize the random seed. Oh boy, what a wonderful psychedelic effect. Let's define a counter variable, to slow down the color change a little bit. Now, let's draw randomly colored pixels, over the entire screen. Well, this demo is very useful, and instructive. It shows a drastic drop in frames per second, when many cells of different colors must be rendered. Let's check what happens, if we draw only 100 random pixels, in two shades of gray. As we see, the number of frames per second is high again. So we shouldn't draw complex graphics in the Windows console, if we want to keep a high number of frames per second. Let's now draw a screen border, using four straight lines of different colors. And then, let's add a bunch of random lines. Instead of random lines, let's draw bordered rectangles. And around the screen, let's draw filled rectangles, defined by their width and height. The next demo shows, how to display a percentage value, using vertical and horizontal bars. The rectangles around the screen are now defined, by fixed coordinates. Now, let's draw a bunch of random circles, of different sizes and colors. 
Well, this looks pretty good. So, let's end today's video with this demo. All source codes and the Consoler Framework Library are available on my GitHub webpage. Check out the links in the video description. In the next episode, we will continue with more complex examples. So for instance, we will see how to display an image, print text using bitmap fonts, and use sprites in the console. We will also explain how to scale and animate sprites. Finally, we will show how to detect collisions between sprites. So stay tuned, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. That way, you don't miss out on more actionable videos like this one. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know by leaving a comment. And if you find today's video interesting, please like it. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye.